Hey guys, welcome back to the show and today to continue with the large format videos, I'm going to do a video about the large format parts. So what is this going to mean? This is going to be the different parts of a large format camera and their names. So that way when I do future videos talking about rise and fall or other things like that, or ground glass, lens board and whatever, you guys know what I'm trying to talk about. So first thing is uh, large format cameras um, change a lot depending on the model, depending on their field camera, press camera and stuff like that. But I will show you different examples. Right now we have a monorail or studio camera here and I'm gonna give you the names with this camera which is basically the one that has the most movements and parts and then we'll start simplifying from there to field camera and then to press camera. So we're gonna start from the bottom so on the bottom we have our tripod head which is here and then we have basically the camera clamp so it's the rail clamp which is this part here which holds the rail that is uh, holding the camera. So this is the CNR1. Each camera brand had their own so you can't mix and fiddle with parts even though CNR had the F2, the P2, the P1 all had the same clamp. So make sure your camera comes with this if you're buying a studio monorail camera, but this is the rail clamp. Then of course we have the monorail, which is here. Uh, this is also um, specific to the brand and sometimes to the model. So make sure you get that too. Then we're gonna start with the front standard. So in the front standard, which is basically this whole part in the front, we're gonna be referring this to a front standard. We're gonna have our lens board, as I said on the video, this is a lens board for CNR and a, cam, um, a lens, large format lens. And the lens board goes there and we lock it down. Remember to always lock it down. If not, you're gonna have your lenses falling off midway. That's happened to me before. Then we have uh, different movements in the front carrier. We have, for example, rise and fall. We have soft focus or what I call a uh, fine focus. So this will give you a fine focus. On the other side of this camera, we have a big focus, which is what I do roughly check your ground glass and see something in focus. That would be it. Then we have shift, which on this lens, uh, on this camera goes sideways. So this would be sideways. And then we have um, tilt or base tilt which in this camera can happen from the bottom, or you can have it here on just under the lens board. And then we have swing, which as you can see is basically shifting the lens that way. I'm not gonna get too much into movements. I just wanna show you the different parts so you get guys understand. I will make a separate video only of movements, which I'll try to remember the link below as it's gonna be a later video. Then we go to bellows, which these are normal bellows and uh, it's like an accordion. Keep in mind these have to be kept pretty well. If they're old or anything like that, be careful for little pinholes, but I'll give you another video on things to be careful with large format cameras when you're buying secondhand. These can also be bag bellows, which are basically like a big bag, so you can use wide angle lenses which require your front standard and your back standard to be very close. But this is um, camera bellows. Now we're going to shift to the back. So let me just turn the camera around. So here we have the back standard. So front standard, back standard, that's fairly simple. Again, as I showed you, the big focusing gear, which is just freely. And then we have the fine focus, which is here. Okay. We have again, rise and fall. We've got shift on the side here. So this will shift it that way. We've got base tilt just under the rear standard. This one also has that bottom tilt, which you can use. And then you have your swing on the back. And then we have our ground glass. This is where your film holder is gonna go into. In the eight by 10 cameras, sometimes they have this little spring release. So it helps put your film holder in and release and you know tighten it again so your film holder sits flat against uh, your camera. So yeah, um, those are the different parts on a monorail camera. Um, it's fairly simple coming from, I guess, seeing this camera just front standard, back standard, bellows, and then the different movements I'll show you guys as I said. But now let's go to a field camera for example. 
So in this case, we have a field camera, 4x5, made by Chamonix in China. Really good cameras and lightweight, uh, very um, popular nowadays. So here we don't have a monorail. So what do we call the bottom part of the camera? Well, I'll, I call it the camera bed because it kind of like lays down as a folder on top. You have something that I haven't said before, but you have your tripod screw, which here I have a tripod plate. So this is easy to access and put on your tripod as fast as you can. Usually they have maybe one or two holes, the big thread and small thread. I think it's three eighths or something like that. And um, the other one, something 16. I'm in a millimeter guy, so can't tell you right now. And the same thing, we have the back standard, we have the front standard. Uh, front standard here is where you would put your lens. We have rise and fall. We have a uh, swing and also shift on the same knob on the bottom. We have tilt here. So you can also tilt from axis. Axis tilt means it goes through the middle. So when you move it, the, um, the tilt will be basically on the center of the lens board. Then bellows, in this case, this camera bellows has a part that's kind of um, bag bellows. It's called universal bellows. Let's you sit a wide angle lens uh, down to like a 72 or something like that without any problems. 90 millimeters will let you shift um, and rise and fall. Then on the back, we have um, the ground glass protector. This is uh, very important if you can get one. There's different versions. This one's the one that comes with Chamonix. That works pretty well. Made of carbon fiber. Then we have our ground glass. Um, we have where the film holder will go in. So that would be the back. In this case, to also remove this, you have to lift these two knobs up. They're not knobs, but you know what I mean. And you can shift it to vertical or um, landscape. Some cameras won't have that option, so I'll show you later with the press cameras. But it's a great option if you can have it. Some are rotating, some are not. Then we have on the back, we have, um, this is for tilting. So you can tilt, let me do it all the way. So it's usually limited by bellows and huge amounts of tilt. So that's not an issue. This is base tilt. This camera has asymmetrical tilt too. So you can also use this. I need to lock this in. So you can also have asymmetrical tilt. What does asymmetrical tilt mean? It means when you tilt, it has uh, the axis of that tilt is in the middle. So not the middle, but the first third of the ground glass. So it lets you focus faster. Then on the back, we have these two knobs which control a bit more focusing or rough focusing. You can also do certain movements like uh, swing and stuff on the back. This is not like a monorail, like I said, it's fairly uh, more simple in some ways and a little bit more complicated in others. I'll show you guys later on the differences with that. Uh, we have the graph lock back, which you remove the ground glass and it has these knobs, um, little gear like wheels on the top and the bottom to lock. Um, focusing on this camera works with the bottom wheel. So the moment we move the bottom wheel, you can see focusing is going front and back. You can choose also different holes for different focal lengths. So if you want to choose a wider one, you'd be closer. So you have to unscrew this whole front um, element, front standard and put it in the back, put it in the front. If you're going to use a longer lens, you want to go to the front. So yeah, that's pretty much the controls and the parts for a field camera. In this case, it has bubble levels too, just like the CNR monorail or studio camera. Let me grab you guys uh, a press camera. So this is probably the most famous press camera. It's not the only one. So if you wanna find different ones, I can let you know, but this is the Graflex. You see how I dropped the bed? You click it here and the bed comes down. Again, same thing as the Chamonix camera. It has a bed and we pull out the front standard. In these cameras, it was great because you were able to keep a small lens inside. So it was really fast to, to set up. This was made like this for press photographers to be run and gun, kind of doing the news. So you pull it out to wherever you think it's necessary and you just lock it. Focusing on this camera works with this front little knob and locking goes here. Then 
up and down and the front standard or rise or fall goes here. Not a big thing because these cameras are meant to be fast. Um, you have uh, shifting here. As you can see, there's a little lock to be able to go the other way. No, that's how much it does. It does this basically. There we go here. Then it has, if I'm not wrong, a bit of um, swing here. Let me see. Or shift yeah shift here so you push this down shift one way push it down shift the other and also i think there you go now it's locked in place and uh on the back the problem is the main difference is in the back in the back there's no movements so all you can do is load your film holder you can focus and whatnot. It has this little viewfinder so you guys can see, which is the ground glasses inside there, which it works really well. And this camera in particular has a rare um, shutter curtain so that all those controls are here. And if you guys wanna see that, it's fairly simple to show. You see that right now has the curtain there. And every time I turn this wheel, there's a different speed set. You see how the slit gets smaller and smaller. And every time I shoot, that goes down. So this is how they would use these cameras. They would just point with a rangefinder, be ready and shoot without the lens cap. I feel like a newbie to here, but this is how you would do it. And then wide open, as you can probably see me right now in there. And yeah, bellows are not interchangeable. Also, this camera won't let you shift the back standard, mainly, I guess, for the rear shutter curtain. So if you wanna change it, you have your tripod hole here. So you would tilt basically, I mean, um, turn the camera 90 degrees and shoot like that. So also the bed would drop. So you just push these two uh, metallic tabs down. So yeah, that's how you drop the bed when you're using wide angle lenses and you would be able to shift uh, the lens, tilt the lens so that would work. So yeah, that's basically all the camera parts on large format. I will be talking about accessories and other things, but I just want to go roughly through the different parts and how you call them. Uh, I probably made a mistake or two, but bear in mind uh, doing this on video is pretty hard sometimes. And yeah, if you have any questions and whatnot, let me know on the comment section below or through social media. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.